everyone, you're watching Andy's Fishing and Wild Cook and for the next two days you're coming with me to do a catch and cook in one of the most pristine, beautiful, scenic places in the world. Look how, how nice the water is. It's clear, it's beautiful sand, it's sheltered. It's actually really rough. You saw coming in, it was, it was quite rough out there. It's going to blow up to 20 knots, but in here I should be fine. On this trip I decided to do a bit of minimalistic camping on the boat. I'll be sleeping yeah, wherever I end up fishing. I'll, I'll hopefully do a bit of exploring as well. I want to go check out the bush a little bit and at low tide all this all this sand here you see behind me that will all come out of the water and we'll have a poke around see see what you can find and yeah it's going to be a cool adventure and I've got a really delicious recipe in mind so keep watching. First lure I'm going to fish with is a Samaki 4 inch bomb shad in like a greeny white colour. Reason for that is it's quite deep still and the fish will be down in the structure. Now a bunch of you have asked me to show you the knot that I use. So what I do is I first put a loop in the leader, put it through the eye of the lure, or in this case the weight, back through the loop, like that, and then around three times and back through that loop. Give it a little bit wet and tighten it up. There we go. That's a loop knot and the lure just moves really freely with that. I always cut the tag end off there we go, nice and neat and ready to fish. I'm going to use the Airdex 4000 combo again. I'll just give you a, a little bit of a tip. The water here is extremely clear. That's about a metre, metre and a half deep. And I've just re-rigged a new leader. It hasn't got scratches on it, it's fluorocarbon. And it's yeah, about five foot long. So, yeah, when the water's really clear, you want to have a nice, shiny new, well not shiny, but nice clear leader on so the fish don't see it. First cast at this nice little rocky outcrop. Check it out. Yep, perfect spot. Let it go down. And I'll talk you through how I fish these spots as well. I do that all the time. It's just, yeah, for people who may not have seen my channel before, I like to give tips all the way through my fishing. So first cast, nothing. Let's try over here. Second cast, Ooh, right next to that edge. Perfect. Watch that line as it goes down, because a lot of fish will grab it as that lure's sinking. Just watching the line still going down, and on the bottom, there we go. So nothing in the first spot. That's all right. Yep. Oh, that's a nice hit. Oh, bit of a, oh, I think it could be a cod. Yep, it's a cod. Oh, I'm going to say we could, could be borderline. Oh, first fish of the trip. Black spot cod. Hey, get that line out of your gill. Let's measure him. Okay, let's have a look. Look at this, he's eating a crab. There you go. That was in his mouth. A little um, mangrove crab, I believe. Put that away. And what else is he eating? A little shrimp? Look at this. <laughs> We're getting a biology lesson from the cod. All right, let's have a look how big he is. All cods in Australia need to be 38 centimeters. And it looks like he will go, actually. He is 41, 41 centimetres. So I reckon we might keep him. We're going to fish a little bit more, but yeah, cod is actually really nice white meat. That, that's about my sixth cast, and I haven't gone more than about 10 metres, and I got nice cod. I'm going to put him on ice and let him stiffen up. We'll deal with him later, but first, let's catch a few more fish. So I got him on that Samaki boom bait and it's got, actually got a quarter ounce head so that's why it, it sinks down nice and quick. You can tell there's a bit of current coming along here but I do want to explore this whole river system right up into the shallows, into the, the small water. Have a few casts every spot and just, just keep moving along. Um, exploring is yeah one of my favourite things when I'm fishing. Here's an interesting snag. I'm going to see if I can burn one right across that shallow bit. Oh yeah! Oh, he snapped me off. Damn it! That was a mangrove jack, and he got me on some oysters. Oh, that worked. <laughs> if you have a snag like that, just burn it real fast straight across the shallow there. I'm just going to use a slightly different hook. It's still a quarter ounce head, but it's it's just one piece. Oh, big splash up there. So while I got you here, I'd like to let you know that this video is sponsored by Skillshare. If you've never heard of Skillshare before, it's a platform and community 
for creators and by creators who want to learn and support each other. I've actually done two courses already. One is Creativity Unleashed by Nathaniel Drew. This course was short, to the point, and well presented. He gave me a different perspective on video creation, also a new way to look at my video analytics. I picked up some tools which I'll use for my channel and videos to improve video quality. If you want to leapfrog your creative projects, including being a YouTuber, there are dozens and dozens of courses. It's a real community with real people helping each other. If you like the idea of Skillshare and you want to know more or learn more, then the first thousand people who use the link in the description below will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. And after the trial period finishes, it's $10 a month. I've actually already signed up. $10 a month to, to learn what's out there is, is pretty cheap, I reckon. For those of you that have commented on my videos and said, oh, your videos are getting better and better each week or month or year, it's because I keep teaching myself how to get better. And Skillshare is an excellent place for that. Why don't you gift yourself a free trial for Christmas? <laughs> and then you can decide if you, want, if you want to stop, you can stop. Otherwise, it's only $10 a month. Anyway, I'm going to go and catch some more fish. A school of tarpon has just turned up to the boat. Let's see if we can catch one. That's right in front of them. Oh, hits, hits, hits. Come on, come on. Got him, yes. Oh, I'm going to say that's a tarpon. Oh, yep, it's a tarpon. Cool. <laughs> oh, I dropped him. Very easy to drop tarpon. Let's see if we can get another one. Yeah, I just heard them, they, they, um, they breathe on the surface, and you can hear, hear a little flick, there we go, oh, there we go, <laughs> hopefully the hook's set this time, oh, he's got a lot of weight in him, there we go, okay, I'm just going to let him go, they are just, a, yeah, nice bit of fun, cool, oh, and he's off, there you go, and drop the hook, let's sharpen that hook. Guys, make sure you stick around for tomorrow's tarpon action. How do I know? Because today is tomorrow. <laughs> Just a little teaser. You won't be disappointed. There's actually some broom hiding right in the back there. There they are, look at that, that black one with the white lip. There he is. Can't even get my lure into there. Very safe little fish, eh? As the tide's dropping, you can see the sand coming out. It's um, almost pure silica sand. I think it's like 98% pure silica. It's a very special place in here. A nice mangrove jack hiding in here. Let's see if I can film him. Oh, very hard. Yeah, I'm not sure I'll get him. There's actually half a dozen mangrove jack in here. Oh, big one at the back there. Let's see if we can get him. look very spooky in clear water is that a barramundi i don't know it could be a mangrove jack or barramundi right there right in the middle of the frame see that that's yeah, i don't know it's some sort of fish i'm having trouble seeing what it is i might try and get a cast in there oh little mangrove jack Ah, oh, teeny weeny fella, we need your mother or auntie or someone else. There we go, little guy. I've seen quite a few, but yeah, first one I've landed. Anyway, let you go, buddy. Okay, hey, off you go. All good. Thought I'd try something a little different, a little hard body. This is a Cracker Jack 78 by Pontoon 21. I do like fishing hard bodies as well. I like fishing anything really. It's just the, the thrill of, you know, chucking it into a tight spot and then the, the whack or the aggressive attack. So we'll give this guy a run. Really nice natural looking lure. And that's what you need in this sort of really fairly clear water. With the hard bodies, they, they flip around a lot and they you can just let them suspend in one spot. With the soft plastics, they, they shoot down real quick and get out of the zone. I see two, no, three man, or two mangrove jack sitting in the back of this snag. Let's see if we can get a shot. It's a bit of a hard cast. 
Oh, yep, he's on it. He's on it. Oh, there's three of them looking. No, and they freaked out. Yep, got him. Oh, what have we got? Oh, that little cod. Oh, I'm hoping for another jack. Hey, this is a orange spot cod. Hey, there we go. Two different cod species. This one's definitely undersized, so we'll let him go as quickly as possible without any harm. Hey, off you go, buddy. Boy. Just motoring to another section here. You can see all the sand started to come out, and hopefully I don't get stuck somewhere up here. It's getting close to low tide, so even if I do get stuck, I should be fine. Just something to keep in mind when, when you're exploring. Lots of stingrays in the shallows here. You, you might be able to see them. Probably, probably a little too far away. But it, yeah, it sure is a scenic place. I should come here more often, actually. Let me know if you think I should come here more often. It looks shallow, but it's probably four, maybe five foot deep here. Have a look. Yeah, and so many, so many stingrays. All right, we've made it to the next little section. It's um, yeah, this is all about exploring for me. Mangroves, nice rock there, sunken tree here. Let's get into it. First cast, new little water hole. Looks like rocks with bits of weed on them. I reckon cod live here, maybe jacks. Oh, yep, yeah. mangrove jack, I think. Yes. <laughs> Second cast in a new spot. Oh, he's not bad. There you go. Nice little mangrove jack. So mangrove jack in Queensland need 35, and I'm going to call him 32, 33. Let's have a look. 33 and a half. There you go. There you go, buddy. And he came from this, I think they're rocks with weeds right here. Not the sort of place most people would fish. Have a guess where half the fish in this river are hiding. There's a snag behind me. I'm going to try and zoom in. Not exactly the easiest thing to do. But they are... I don't know if I've got them there. Is that them? In there. Look at that. I reckon that is half the fish in this river. There's a lot, a lot of fish in there. I can't see what they are. It's, um, yeah, it's hard to see the view of hot viewfinder whilst trying to film past my head looking that way. <laughs> a little oyster covered rock in the shallows here. Let's see if anyone's home. Yep, ooh, that was a good hit and got him, yes. What is it, mangrove jack? Oh, there's two cods. There's two cods. Oh, he's just eating the other one. <laughs> oh, oh, have I got the big one now? I have got the big one now. <laughs> I got a little cod and then the big cod ate the little cod and got hooked on the lure. Check this guy out. The one I had on was about half that size before. That is wild. I had one on that was about that long, and this guy stuck it the whole thing, or half half the other fish, in his mouth. Wow. <laughs> you don't see that every day. But you can see they have a massive mouth. That other fish was right in there. That's like, yeah, three, oh, four fingers wide. I can, I can stick my hand in there. Hey, very nice specimen. He would be legal as well, but yep, yeah, we've got one, so I'll let you go. Hey. There you go. One and a half twist with a belly flop entry. <laughs> Five points. There is a lot of like structure, I think, down deep. Oh, got him, yes. What have we got? Oh, looks like, yep, another cod. We're actually starting to run out of this water hole. It's, um, yeah, we can't go anywhere there. Can't go that way, I don't think. What I might try and do is go up here, but yeah, anyway. I'll, I'll get rid of this fish first and we'll explain that in a second. There's a chance we could get stuck going going up there. Anyway, off you go, buddy. And this lure in this water, this, this water's actually got a bit dirtier now with a rattle. 
is, is actually helping me to catch fish, I think. Yep, got him that time. Oh, I don't know if it's the same one. It looks a little smaller. Yeah, a little smaller. It's a cod. Yeah, definitely not the same one that had to go first. So you might be asking, what's the crazy person doing now? <laughs> We've got about 400 metres of really shallow stuff, and I'm going to walk the boat up through it to try and get to the next water hole. <laughs> this is yeah, this is what I love doing. Go on exploring. Anyway, let's hope we can get right through. It does look shallow right at the other end, so this could be forty five minutes of frustration. But you gotta try these things. Now you can tell the current is still ripping out. I'm pushing against like the tide here. So if we get stuck, we're really gonna get stuck. Anyway, it's um just over knee deep, which is plenty of water for me at the moment. I want to try and get, yeah, four or five hundred metres up that way. And it does look shallow right up the end, but we've got to give it a go. The surprising thing for me is as I'm walking along here, there's no yabby holes. Not, not a single yabby hole. I think this sand might be a little bit too fine and it moves around too much. So, yeah, oops, we're getting a bit stuck here. Need to go a little bit deeper. Oh, a bit of a hard work here. We're probably 150 metres up already. So, probably, I don't know, two, three, maybe, maybe even 400 left to go. Anyway, that's what makes adventuring fun. If you thought there was lots of fish in that last hole, wait till we get to the next hole, if we get there. My theory is always, the further you go, the better the fishing gets. And when it's hard and painful like this to get somewhere, pretty much almost guaranteed you're going to get something. Just taking the boat for a little stroll up the river. <laughs> We've come well over 300, probably even 400 metres now. And this is a section where it's just really shallow undulating. So I'm not quite sure. That looks really shallow. Maybe if I push over this way, I can, I can sneak along the mangroves there, but yeah. We're running out of water. It's, it's, yeah, it's only like 25 centimeters. Oh, shit, we just got stuck. It's only 25 centimeters deep here. Oh, we're getting stuck. Oh, i got to keep the boat moving. No, we're stuck. Oh, so close. That's it, look. It's stuck. Oh, I'm going to have to scout around. It looks like a channel. I'm going to have to go back 50 meters. I'm not liking this. I'll try to get back a little bit, but yeah. I'm now going the wrong way to go the right way. Here's that channel. Let's hope we can get up, up through here. Look at that, we're back over knee deep. We may be able to start the motor in here. As long as we can get around that little corner there, we should be right. All right, let's get in the boat. Come on boat, do your stuff. This is what you were designed for. Okay, oh, come with me. Woo, we're floating. Oh, it feels so good to be almost through. Let's hope we can get through. Like I said, new water that would hardly ever be fished because you just, you just get stuck in here. Ooh, big stingray. And that's it, we're in. Woohoo! <laughs> Alrighty, let's get the electric back in the water and start fishing. Oh, so good, so good. There we go, perfect. That was a bit of a challenge and excitement. <laughs> I wasn't sure if I was gonna get through that last bit, but I'd say that's almost 500 meters. Anyway, we're in and I'm gonna fish a little bit more. Can you hear the cicadas? Quite noisy. Anyway, let's be a little bit quiet. <laughs> I got excited, so we'll just, just be a little bit quiet. We'll catch some more fish. I reckon we'll get some nice fish in here. Yeah, let's do it. First cast in the new spot. Oh, I can see some mangrove jack in there already. I didn't want it. 
But there are definitely mangrove jacks swimming in there. Oh, cool. Cool. Alright, ooh, nice spot. Yeah, we're going to need a little bit deeper. It's, it's like only just... Ooh, look at him, look at him. There's 20 mangrove jack in here. Oh, and a big one too. This is going to be the spot. We're just a little too close. There was like 20 fish in there. Oh, and more fish here. There is just fish loaded in this hole. Oh, I just need to get in, in a bit. Oh, here you go, here you go. Oh, they're a bit wary. I always look at Google Earth when I come. Oh, big stingray when I come to a place like this. And there's certain places where I think, oh, I'd love to get there. But not sure if I will. And we've just made it. Oh, got him, yes. Oh, oh I dropped him. That was a nice mangrove jack. That was a good mango jack. Not going to come again. Damn it. This looks like a really gnarly sort of spot. Good. Oh, he hit me on the way out. I was giving up. Oh, come back, come back. Oh, that's a good fish. That's a good fish. Oh, another black spot. Beautiful. Oh. So that was that was mangrove jack definitely coming out of there. I think this is my biggest black spot today. Oh yes, definitely. He would go. Oh, let's see, 45 centimeters, easy, easy 45 centimeters. I told you this hole would be where the fish are, the big fish. The camera angle probably looks a bit weird because I'm filming with my knees, but I don't know how to get this fish in the frame otherwise. Look at that. Ooh, nice black spot cord. <laughs> Under the fish. <laughs> All right. Oh, camera's gone. Let's let him go. For those of you that like a measurement, let's have a look at him. That's zero. Yep, 46 centimeters. What a magnificent little fish. Hey, eh? well, not so little. 46 centimeters. Hey, eh? and you get to fight another day. You get to breed. That's why I let these fish go. Breed away. Hey. Eh? Off you go. Nice. Big broom over here in the shallows. Got him! Oh, it's a jack. Mango jack. Oh, not the, not the broom I just thought I saw. Oh, I did see the broom, but... Oh, Ooh, he's a good in this one. I just changed to a black and gold uh, greedy guts. And look at this. Oh, first cast. And we're in. Oh, now he is a good fish. I reckon he is actually legal. Oh, I'll get a measurement on him. I reckon I might take this one home. Look at that. Oh, nice mangrove jack. Wow, cool. So the legal size for mangrove jack is 35, and I'll say he's like 37. Oh, he's 40. 40 centimeter mangrove jack. Very nice. These are actually really good eating. There's a bit of light. There's a bit of light. Look at that. Picturesque spot with a very good fish. And as soon as I changed, I had three different lures on before this one. First cast with this one, bang, on. I think it's the flash that's getting them in this, this sort of little bit tannin stained water. That's the lure I got him on. Pontoon 21, greedy guts. These are actually all from the Tackle Club boxes. And I, I really think it's the flash. See that, see that flash coming off that lure? I reckon that's what's making the, the jack strike. Big rock. There should be something sitting at the front of that. Right there. Come on. Come on. Got him, yes. I knew it. I knew it. Feels like a cod. Oh, feels like a good cod. Oh. oh, he's got me under. Oh, he's got the log. Oh, a tree here. Oh, there goes my arm. Oh, yes, that is a monster cod. Oh, oh you almost drove me into that tree there. Oh, look at this guy. Oh, I'm going to have to get lip grippers on him. That is a cool fish. Look at the size of him. Oh, that is a good fish. Oh, no wonder he almost had me. Oh, and I knew that that ledge there, whoops, the one I'm stuck in with the back of my boat, would be a spot. That is one decent cod. I'm going to have to get a glamour shot with that guy. I think my first estimate of 60 centimetres was over the mark, but 
52 would be right on the money I reckon he is 51 51 centimeters look at that guy look at him looking down at the lip grippers he knows they're hanging on to him and as soon as they come off he'll take off oh there he goes wet me well that's it for fishing for today let's uh yeah go and cook some food up the reason I came up this creek for this episode, the two days, is because it's supposed to blow up to 20 knots this afternoon. Doesn't quite feel like it, but we'll see what happens in the morning. We'll camp the night here, we'll sleep on the boat. Fingers crossed it stays down, that's, that'd be great. I did say minimalist, but don't have to be uncomfortable. So chair there, let's see, I think there's a table under here. Easy as that. go kitchen is set up almost <laughs> now somewhere in here I've got a little cooker I only just bought this it's a little tiny gas cooker and there is a bit of gas in there check this out this will make my hikes and lightweight camping a game changer look at that that's it it's going how cool I quite like cooking on the boat because it means all my stuff is here. I don't have to like drag it up and set it up on the beach. Knife, a grater, a little container, spatula. Out of my esky I've got some butter, oil, full cream milk, some cheese and an onion. Any idea what we're cooking yet? The cheese I've got is lemon myrtle macadamia club cheddar. That on its own is, is pretty tasty, I reckon. You just get some of that and grate it into a bowl with some flour at the bottom. We'll grate maybe oh, a quarter of a cup. Most people would say using the wrong cheese for this, and I probably am. But I'm the wild cook, so anything goes. Mmm. <laughs> that cheese is actually really nice on its own. If you've never tried lemon myrtle, it's like a citrusy, lemony hint. It's not like lemon itself. It's, yeah, it's really nice. So then we get the, the cheese and we coat it all in the flour. Strip of streaky bacon and just cut it into small, thin strips. And look how peaceful it is here. There's a little breath of wind. The sun's just above the ridge. We've got white, beautiful sand here. The water's actually quite clean rushing in really peaceful all you can hear is a few birds going whoop 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 anyway i better keep moving because time is going to get away from me just going to dice up a spring onion i believe this is mm. nice and fine little tiny cubes and can you believe how many fish i caught today that was yeah it was quite a lot of fish i'm probably not even going to show you all of them it was just too many and yeah once again, I probably did fish a little bit later than I should have. It's time to get our cod, and he is actually stiffened up nicely. That's, that's, that's the main reason I put them in the esky straight away, is to stiffen them up so they're easy to, to fillet and work with. No messing around here. I'm just going to rip his fillets off. Actually, you know what? I think we'll just do one fillet today. Cods actually have really nice white meat. They rival coral trout, I think, in, in edibility. Mm, I can still taste that lemon myrtle in the cheese. That's, I think that's going to add a really nice flavour into dinner. So I'm just going to cut down the pin bones here. There we go. Don't need that. And just cube the fish up. Now, people in America, this is called grouper or grouper. Very nice white meat. My kitchen sink is right over the side of the boat. You can wash everything. That was the quickest prep I've done for a long time. I forgot, I was going to put some broccoli in there as well. So we'll just cut, I think these are the florets. Cut, I don't know, four or five florets off like that. One more, there we go. Bit of green in dinner, big one here, cut it in half. So i just put this out of the wind. We've got probably, uh, I don't know, less than a quarter of a cup of water in there. Just enough to get that steaming. Now we so for you guys that want to do this sort of thing, Every time I start out on one of these trips, I think, oh, geez, the cooking, it's going to take a long time. But you saw that was super quick, and quite often it is, it is really quick. It's, it's 
in your mind where the psychology makes it hard for you. If you haven't figured it out yet, what I'm making is cod in a white sauce. I think it could be called bouillabaisse, I'm not 100% sure. I'm not actually a chef. But it's, it's basically a, a creamy, milky sauce that'll get thickened up. Broccoli's been boiling about oh, three minutes now. And you know it's good when it changes to that really vibrant green color. So what we'll do is we'll turn that off and leave it in the pot. Get the saucepan, a bit of oil in there. We'll get the bacon and onion. So I do have a little bit of a wind problem, so I've just used the table as a windbreak. Now we just want to brown those onions off and get a little bit of color onto that bacon. Mmm, bacon and onion. Can you smell it? That onion is starting to get a nice bit of color on it, and that's pretty much all we need. So we'll get the fish and drop it in there. Now once again, we want to cook the fish about halfway through just so the outside turns white. And what I've done is I've wrapped the broccoli in the pot inside a tea towel. So it'll stay warm while this cooks. And it's not totally cooked yet. So what we'll do then is I've got some long life milk. I was gonna use one, but it's probably not enough. So I'm gonna use two, 400 mils. Whilst the milk's heating up, you really wanna keep stirring it. Here's a better look at the cheese with the flour coating on it. It's, um, yeah, it's literally just enough flour to coat the cheese. And now, as soon as that reaches the boil, we're going to drop in the cheese and flour mixture. Now, I like, I like to spread it around, not do it all at once. Because we want that cheese to melt all through the sauce. You want to keep stirring this. And what will happen is, as I stir it, this will thicken up. This whole cooking process shouldn't take any more than about 10, maximum 15 minutes. And that is actually starting to thicken up nicely there. Have a look at this. Look at that. It's actually starting to get a little bit thick. And yep, right on sunset. Just the way I like it. <laughs> oh, look at the bubbles there. Just a little bit of bubbling away. I hope you can see the yellow in that sauce. Just a little bit of pepper, salt and pepper. Just to give it a little bit of extra flavour. Not that it actually really needs any more flavour. But then... We get our broccoli on the plate. There we go. And you guessed it, straight on top with the sauce, fish, bacon, onion. Yummy. Now we're talking. Woo! <laughs> there we have dinner all cooked up. And that's all I used to cook it up. That's pretty cool, isn't it? I think this thing weighed, like the cooker itself, is like under 100 grams. I think I'm going to enjoy this little cooker. Anyway, let's enjoy dinner. <laughs> let's just try the sauce on its own. Mm. The lemon myrtle is, is not overpowering. It's just a slight hint of it. Mm, very nice. A little bit of bacon bit of onion. Mm, there's a bit of fish in there too. It all works really well together. The fish is cooked so it flakes apart in your mouth. The bacon, it's not overpowering. I only used one one small slice and same with the onion. When you when you caramelize the onion, put a bit of color on it, it um, it takes away the bite and the and the really oniony oniony taste. See see if I if I cook the broccoli right. It's perfect. It's fresh and it's got a little tiny crunch to it but none of it's raw. I've done well there. And the whole thing is really quite cheesy. Wow, I'm gonna enjoy this. It's a really nice afternoon. Actually, you guys should have a look at the sunset over there. It's um, all colors of orange and yellow and a little bit of pink, blue sky. I'll find a slightly different spot to uh, anchor the night. I need enough water so that in the middle of the night when the tide's really low, I'm not gonna sit on the bottom and then roll onto my side. I've done that a couple of times and it's really annoying at like 3 in the morning, which is actually when low tide is. So, yeah, I don't want to be stuck on the ground at a, at a 15 degree lean at 3 in the morning. <laughs> Let's um, just finish my dinner and then we'll go find a, find a spot.
thought I'd share two bits of good news with you guys. Number one, my motor's working. <laughs> I managed to fix the hydraulics by myself. A couple of new seals, new cap, put it together the right way, and yeah, not a problem. The other thing is my desktop computer has been fixed. So instead of taking three days to edit, it should take me two, maybe one and a half days to edit a 30, 40 minute video. So that makes it a lot easier on me. It was taking me over three days to do a 40, 50 minute video and it's just very frustrating. So hopefully that computer lasts for another year. Um, I'm waiting for the next generation of Apple Mac to come out. Anyway, that's the, um, the really short update of what's been going on behind the scene. Anyway, I need to find a spot uh, kind of far enough away from the mangroves so that they won't come and get me in the middle of the night. Or well, now actually. They're, yeah, they're pretty vicious right now. Anyway, um, yeah. So we'll head further out towards where we came from. Hey guys, I managed to find a spot. I'm probably a hundred meters from that side and three, four hundred meters from that side. I have heard a couple of mosquitoes already, but there's a, there's a bit of wind around at the moment. And I'm hoping the sand flies just won't bug me all night long. We'll see how it goes. Um, yeah, I'm kind of stuck here now, so it's, it's too dark to go anywhere else. There's sandbars all through here, and yeah, without being able to see, I'm going to stay here the night. <laughs> anyway, I'll show you my minimalist boat camping setup in the morning. It's very minimal. I hope it doesn't rain. Brush my teeth, and so far so good. The sand flies don't appear to be able to find me out here. It is a little bit windy. Can you can you see the wind blowing through my hair? <laughs> I've got yeah, very short hair, and actually I forgot to shave this trip, which is a bummer. I normally normally like to look presentable. Anyway, I'd like to give you a little update on the upcoming trips for my fans. Uh, Trover Trip is organising them and yeah, we're talking with a lodge and we should have a trip in November of 2021. So you'll hear about it much sooner. Um, I'm, I'm thinking that there'll be an email sent out to eligible people uh, somewhere in the next two to three weeks is, is my guess. We haven't finalised everything yet and It'll only go ahead if it's COVID safe and you know everyone's fine to travel. Uh, but there should be something heading your way in two to three weeks. That's the quick update version. I'm gonna go to bed and I'll see you guys in the morning. stop till I'm gonna say one o'clock in the morning it was really quite windy and actually you can see the it's just starting to it's just starting to get windy now yeah. it's probably before five it's only just first light uh, yeah and I actually had to move the boat I was over there and I would have been on the sandbar a couple of hours ago because the tides just started coming in again the sand flies are nuts I was over 100 metres from that last night. Now we're oh, 15 metres from it, and all the sandflies that live on the shore are coming over and having having a feed of me. I would have been much better off over there, but it was too shallow, so I couldn't stay there. I'll just quickly show you the bed I've got. It's I did I did use my sleeping bag last night, but it was too hot and. The sand flies kept getting me, so I've chosen to just sleep in the sleeping bag liner. And it's got like a little pocket for a pillow. And I just put my head in there. It's got enough air going through it so I can breathe. It's cool enough. And the sand flies just, yeah, they don't worry about it. They don't go through. So it's really cool. I've got ground mat, pillow, and just the foam. I keep a couple of bits of foam on the boat for, for seats. 
So that's that's my minimalistic bed on the boat. The other bed's packed up. The sand flies are pretty shocking this morning. And that was about 10 grams of gas, if that. There wasn't much left in that. That's, that's empty. So the wind is forecast to come up to 15 to 20 knots today. I can feel the breeze starting already. It's, it's definitely not too windy. Um, there was a bit of wave action last night. You could hear it. Well, you could hear the breakers. It's probably two kilometres away. You could hear the breakers on the foreshore. A little treat for breakfast. Some cream in my hot chocolate. Can you guys see the sandflies buzzing around? Oh, they're around? A little bit annoying. And for anyone who doesn't know what sandflies feel like, um, sometimes they're not as bad, but today they're very irritating. It's like having itching under your skin. Even after they've gone, it's like your skin's itching underneath. It's it's really uncomfortable, annoying feeling. I might have to have a little fish for those tarpon. They're, they're in this hole here, and they keep rolling over there. Rolling is when they, they take a gulp of air and go down. They're actually a very ancient fish. And I don't know, maybe their gills don't work as well as other fish, but they take a gulp of air to aerate their gills. So, let's, actually there they are, they're waiting on the back there. Put the fly rod there. I reckon I'll break that out. Let's see if I can't get a tarpon on fly rod. Here's the funny thing. <laughs> I cleaned out my boat last week and took all the unnecessary stuff out. And then when I went on this trip, I quickly grabbed the fly rod, not knowing I've taken all the fly rod flies out of my boat. Normally I've got a few flies stuck in the carpet, but I've got nothing. So I've got one crab sort of fly on the fly rod, and we'll give it a shot. Yeah, that's the only fly I've got on the boat. What a bugger. Hmm. <laughs> That's the only fly that I have. Been doing this for quite a while, and it's finally been fun. There we go. Woo -hoo. This guy out. It's so cool when you set a goal and you get it. <laughs> These things don't last long out of the water. Straight up in. There you go. See you, Tom. Let's see if we can get another one. There's actually quite a lot here. How much fun is this? Fish are hungry, don't eat it. Stop and 
number three. I'm just going to change the direction of filming because I reckon the sun was probably right in the camera there. Hopefully you can see better and the motor noise isn't too loud. So they're slowly moving into the mangroves. This could be my last one. They're, they're, yeah, they're getting closer and closer and going right up into the mangroves at high tide. These things hide right inside where I can't fish for them. Try for one more, but I think it's going to get harder. How's the fight on these? Cartwheeling, jumping, just, yeah, I don't know, it's so much fun. Yeah. How epic was that tarpon session? <laughs> Hopefully I got some really good shots there. Oh, I haven't had one like that for, I don't know how many years. Anyway, it's about a two hour drive home. It's probably going to get a, a lot rougher than it is. I mean, we're in, we're in this like big river system here. You can see the clouds moving at at least 15 knots. I know there's a lot of young YouTube channels out there and I can guarantee you $10 a month investment in your future is totally worth it. Try it for free, link in the description, Skillshare, check it out. I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching everyone. Please subscribe and click the notification bell so you get notified of my new videos. I do them every week. I'd also like to say a big thank you to my Patreon supporters and people who've donated through PayPal. If you want to see more right now, click the, uh, the links above. Catch you next time.